Welcome to Telluman Insights, where we reveal the hidden forces that shape the way you live and show you how to use them to create real transformation and supercharge your health, mindset, and daily life. Here are your hosts, Emma Greenwood and Nathan Sinclair. Welcome back to Tea Illumin Insights. Ready for another deep dive? Always. Today, we're tackling something really mind-bending. It's called the DNA phantom effect. Sounds like science fiction, right? <laughs> but it's based on actual experiments. It really is wild. We'll be looking at the work of Vladimir Proponin and his team. They were at the Russian Academy of Sciences. Okay, so set the scene for us. Yeah, so picture this. They were studying how DNA interacts with light. Specifically, they were shining a laser through a chamber that had DNA samples in it. They wanted to see how the photons, the light particles, you know, would behave around the DNA. So far, it sounds pretty standard. What'd they find? Well, at first, things went kind of as expected. The photons arranged themselves in this predictable pattern around the DNA, you know, like they were being influenced by it. Makes sense. DNA's got an electromagnetic field, right? So it could be interacting with those photons. Exactly. But here's where things take a turn for the strange. They took the DNA out of the chamber, and the photons kept acting like the DNA was still there. They stayed in that same organized pattern, even though the DNA was physically gone. No way. Right. Really? So like, it's as if the DNA left some kind of, like, ghostly imprint on the space itself. That's the DNA phantom effect in a nutshell. It's a total head-scratcher. Because if we're going by classical physics, this shouldn't happen. It suggests that DNA is interacting with the environment on a level that we don't quite grasp yet, a level that goes beyond the physical stuff, the matter we can see and touch. Okay, whoa, so the DNA, just by being there, somehow changed the actual space. And that change remained even when the DNA was gone. That's the gist of it, yeah. This challenges a lot of our basic assumptions about how matter and energy work. I mean, think about it in terms of quantum mechanics. We've got the wave function, right, which describes the probabilities of a particle's properties. Right, like where it might be, how it might be spinning, all that quantum stuff. Exactly. Well, the phantom effect makes it seem like the DNA, even after being removed, still influences that wave function. It's almost like, you know, those ripples in a pond when you drop a pebble in? Oh, yeah. You get those expanding yeah. rings. Imagine the pebble's gone, but those ripples remain. That's sort of what we're seeing here. Okay, I'm starting to picture it. So DNA is like the pebble, making lasting ripples in the fabric of reality. I like that analogy. It captures the essence of what makes this research so fascinating. DNA might be doing more than just carrying genetic information. It might be actively shaping its surroundings on this quantum level. Wow. Okay. My mind is blown. This is making me think about those stories of phantom limbs, you know, where someone loses a limb but still feels sensations in the space where that limb used to be. It's definitely an interesting connection, and it makes you wonder just how much do we really understand about the relationship between our physical body and, I don't know, what some might call an energetic body. Exactly. So, all right, how are scientists even beginning to explain this DNA phantom effect? Are there theories out there that sort of makes sense of these results because it's pretty spooky. Right. Well, one of the leading theories involves what are called torsion fields. Now, this is getting into theoretical physics, but the basic idea is torsion fields are related to the spin of particles. Okay, spin like a planet rotating. Kind of, but on a much, much tinier scale. Think of it like an intrinsic property of the particle itself. And some scientists believe that DNA might actually generate these torsion fields. And the thing about these fields is they could carry information. And maybe, just maybe, they linger even after the DNA is removed. Hold on, let me get this straight. You're saying that our DNA, like right now, could be creating these invisible fields around us. And those fields are carrying information. Like, what kind of information? That's one of the big questions. But it's definitely a mind-blowing concept. It could be a key to explaining how this phantom DNA keeps interacting with photons even after it's been removed from the chamber. Wow. Okay, I need a minute to process that. Mm -hmm. So... If our DNA is making these fields, could they be affecting the things around us, like other people or even objects? That's a question that researchers are exploring, absolutely. The idea is that we might be constantly surrounded by these fields, influencing and being influenced by them. It's pretty wild when you think about it. It's like we're all connected by these invisible webs of energy and information. In a way, yeah. And this leads us to the work of another researcher, Peter Garyev, who actually collaborated with Proponin. He came up with this concept called the wave genome. He suggested that DNA isn't just a molecule, it's a whole informational system. 
and it interacts with all sorts of waves, acoustic waves like sound, electromagnetic waves like light, and even something called scalar waves. Scalar waves. Now that's a new one. What are those exactly? They're a bit tricky to explain. But imagine instead of traveling in a straight line, they expand outwards in all directions from a single point. Think of it like, remember those ripples in the pond? It's like that, but the ripples are spreading out in three dimensions, like a sphere. Whoa. Okay, that's hard to visualize. I know, it's pretty abstract. But the idea is that DNA might be using these waves to store and transmit information. So wait, are you saying our DNA is like picking up signals from the world around us through these waves, like some kind of antenna? It's a good way to think about it. Guryev's research really dives into how DNA might be using these waves to communicate. Hold on, hold on. Are we saying DNA is like a radio receiver, sending and receiving information through waves? Doesn't that kind of contradict what we know about, you know, genetic inheritance? Like, if DNA is constantly interacting with the environment like this, wouldn't that mean our genes are a lot more flexible than we thought? It definitely challenges the traditional view of genetics. What if our genes aren't just a static set of instructions, but this dynamic system capable of change based on what information it encounters? Okay, my head is spinning. That totally changes how we think about DNA. But what does this mean for, like, the bigger picture? What's DNA's role in all of this? Well, one thing it suggests is that all that junk DNA, the 97% of DNA that doesn't code for proteins, maybe it's not junk after all. What if that's the part that's crucial for this wave-based communication? What if it's processing information from these fields and influencing our biology in ways we haven't even considered? Mind blown. It's like our understanding of DNA was just the tip of the iceberg, right? <sighs> There's this whole hidden world of information transfer going on that we're just starting to glimpse. But how does consciousness fit into all of this? That's the really big question. Some mm. researchers believe that how DNA interacts with these fields, it might go beyond just physical processes. It could be connected to consciousness itself. Whoa. Okay. So are we talking about DNA through these fields playing a role in how we think, how we feel, who we are? That's a fascinating line of inquiry, and it really pushes the boundaries of what we thought we knew about life and the universe. This is incredible. We've gone from photons to torsion fields to wave genomes, and now consciousness. It's like everything's connected. It really is. And that interconnectedness might be even deeper than we realize. Think about it. If DNA can leave such a lasting effect on its environment, even when it's physically gone, what does that tell us about the potential for our own DNA to be creating energetic imprints? both within us and around us. Now that's a thought. If we're all surrounded by these fields of information, constantly influencing and being influenced by them, what does that mean for how we understand the human body? What can it do? It challenges us to completely rethink our assumptions about reality. Are we more than just flesh and bone? Is there an energetic component that plays a part in our health, our well-being, even our consciousness? These are the questions researchers are starting to explore. And the answers could change everything. Wow. This has been quite a journey so far. We've covered so much in part one of our deep dive into the DNA phantom effect. From warping space-time to invisible fields, wave genomes, and even hints at a connection to consciousness, it's clear that DNA is much more than just a blueprint. It seems to be a dynamic force shaping and being shaped by the universe in ways we're just starting to grasp. It really is remarkable, and we're only getting started. It's amazing, right? All this from observing how photons behave around DNA. It's like that experiment opened up a whole new understanding of reality. We went from DNA as this static blueprint to this dynamic force interacting with energy and information. Totally. And we were starting to talk about consciousness right before we... Yeah, before we... Yeah. And this is where it gets really interesting. Remember Garyayev and the wave genome? Well, he didn't just think DMA was receiving information from these waves. He thought it could interpret them too and respond. Like almost a biological computer. Wait, are you saying my DNA is taking information from scalar waves yeah. and using that to tell my cells what to do? Like a biocomputer. That's nuts. Sounds crazy. But that's what Garyev's research suggests. It challenges that whole idea of genes being a set of fixed instructions. Instead, they're adapting based on the info they receive. Okay, I'm trying to keep up here. Let's say I'm feeling stressed, really anxious. Could that like create a pattern energy-wise that my DNA picks up through these waves? And then could that affect how my body works? Could I get physically sick because of it? That's a great question, and researchers are looking into that. There's more and more evidence that our thoughts and emotions have a real impact on our bodies. That's like the placebo effect, right? Huh? People get better just because they believe they're getting treatment, even if it's a sugar pill. Could that be our beliefs affecting us on a deeper level? Maybe even our DNA. 
The placebo effect is a perfect example of the mind-body connection, and some think the DNA phantom effect might explain it. Like how beliefs, especially really strong ones, can create a kind of energetic blueprint that interacts with our DNA. So like the phantom DNA messing with those photons, maybe our thoughts make blueprints that impact our bodies. We're shaping our own reality with every thought, every feeling. It's a powerful concept. It highlights how much our minds can influence our biology, our lives. Exciting and kind of scary, to be honest. If our thoughts are that powerful, we need to be careful what we focus on, right? What we believe in the energy we put out there. Absolutely. It really shows how important it is to cultivate positive thoughts and beliefs, manage stress, create a good environment for ourselves. It means we might have more control over our health than we thought. It's like that saying, change your thoughts, change your life. But now we're talking about changing our thoughts, maybe changing our biology at the deepest level. Exactly. And that opens up huge possibilities for healing and transformation. Imagine if we could use our minds to affect our DNA, overcoming illness, boosting our abilities, even slowing down aging. Wow, that's incredible. But also a little frightening. What if someone misused this knowledge? Could they manipulate someone's DNA, control their thoughts? How do we make sure this is used ethically for good? Those are really important questions. The potential is huge, but so are the ethical concerns. We need to be careful, thoughtful, make sure this is used to help people, not harm them. So we need to talk about this more, bring these ideas out in the open, and discuss the implications. I agree. We need those conversations. Spaces where we can explore these complex things, ask the tough questions. Knowledge is power, but it's up to us to use it wisely. Well said. This deep dive has taken us from tiny photons all the way to maybe rewriting our genes. It's amazing what scientific curiosity can do and keeping our minds open to new things. It also shows that our understanding of the universe keeps changing. Something impossible yesterday could be a breakthrough today. Who knows what else we'll discover as we keep exploring DNA and consciousness. I'm ready for the next big discovery. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me thinking, you know, the mysteries of the universe and everything. Me too. And I think this is a good place to... Um... Yeah, to pause and let it all sink in. We've covered a lot. Back again for T-Lumen Insights, still exploring the DNA phantom effect, and things are getting really interesting. Definitely a big shift in how we see matter, energy, and information all working together makes you think about what reality really is. Before we took a break, we were discussing how DNA might be like a biocomputer, taking in info from those energy fields. And we touched on how our thoughts and feelings could even be shaping our own DNA. Yeah, and that's one of the most exciting parts of this research. If our DNA is constantly responding to information, it means we might be able to influence that process. Okay, so let's say I want to be healthier, you know, improve my well-being. Could I actually change my thoughts, change my beliefs to positively impact my DNA? Like if I focus on feeling grateful, joyful, could that create an energy shift that my DNA picks up on? Researchers are looking into that very question. And there's more evidence all the time that our thoughts, emotions, they have a real impact on our biology, way down deep. It reminds me of those ancient traditions that talk about the mind healing the body. Maybe they were onto something. It's possible. Science is sometimes catching up to ancient wisdom. The more we learn about how interconnected everything is, the more we see that our thoughts and beliefs aren't just ideas in our heads. They affect the world around us. This is mind-blowing. So if our thoughts can influence our DNA, what does that mean practically? Hmm. For medicine, for personal growth, what could this change? The possibilities are huge. Imagine using mental practices, visualizations, even sound and light therapies to heal, to boost our abilities, even to influence how our genes express themselves. Hold on. Are you suggesting we could actually rewrite our genetic code with our minds? It might sound like science fiction, but based on the research, it might not be impossible. We're only beginning to see how consciousness can interact with matter, and the implications are enormous. I'm trying to grasp this. It's like unlocking a whole new level of human potential. But with great power comes great responsibility, right? Mm. As we explore these possibilities, what ethical concerns do we need to keep in mind? You're right. We have to be careful and wise. As we learn more about consciousness and DNA, we have to make sure this knowledge is used for good. So what are some of the key takeaways from our deep dive into the DNA phantom effect? What do you hope our listeners will remember? I hope they've come away with a sense of wonder, a sense of possibility. We've learned that DNA is much more than a blueprint. It's a dynamic force interacting with the universe in ways we're only beginning to understand. And we've seen that our thoughts, our emotions, even our beliefs, 
they might have a much bigger impact on our biology than we thought. Maybe we're not just passengers on this genetic ride. We have a hand in shaping our own destiny. Exactly. And that's empowering and humbling at the same time. It means we have a responsibility to be positive, to take care of ourselves, and to use this knowledge wisely for the good of everyone. This has been an incredible journey, Emma. Thanks for guiding us through the DNA phantom effect. It feels like we've only just scratched the surface, but it's given me a whole new perspective on the power we have within us. It's been my pleasure, Nathan. And remember, this is only the beginning. There are so many mysteries still out there. Who knows what amazing discoveries are waiting for us as we explore the world of DNA and consciousness. That's what makes it so exciting. And that brings us to the end of another deep dive here at T Lemon Insights. We hope you enjoyed this mind-expanding exploration as much as we did. Until next time, keep your minds open and keep those questions coming.